All right, we're back to work on the AnyCubic Any Cubic Linear Plus Delta 3D printer again. It's been about a month since we actually did any work on this machine, and one of the things I noticed in the last month is that entropy completely took over the workbench. I had to spend about a half an hour cleaning up here just to find all the pieces. And when we left off last time, I just left everything sitting on the bench, and then over the next month, stuff kept getting piled up and piled up on the bench, and... Um, Everything I think is pretty much where I left it once I cleaned all the junk up. Uh, but hopefully we'll be able to find everything. First thing I gotta do is figure out where we left off. Alright, so we look through the instructions here. The next step we've got to do is install the timing belts. Uh, it comes in a package like this. Uh, all rolled up in one big long piece. The timing belt runs from the lower stepper motor up through the up through the belt tensioning mechanism here and then to the get it in here through the upper pulley assembly up here at the top and then back down again and the this, this molding right here is what allows that what tightens everything so we're gonna first thing we're gonna do is take the timing belt that's supplied we're gonna cut that into three equal pieces what's that you think we need to do pal uh, do a video um, cleaning up the shop and then a go-kart video oh you want to make a go-kart yeah Okay, well, we do have a welder, so I guess we could learn how to make a video. All right, uh, not to make a video, make a go-kart. Uh, so we've got the uh, timing belt here. Let's get started on, on cutting that timing belt up. It's it's packaged here. Uh, it's all wrapped up. I, and tape. Boy, it's awkward here to try to work with the camera in the way. I, I don't well, know. We need to learn how to hang it up from the ceiling. You think hanging it from the ceiling would work? Think that would help? Yeah, or unfinished train table. Or the other thing we could do is put the, uh, we could get the document camera out. You know, the document camera they use at school and yeah. works over. Yeah, we maybe maybe work one of those up. The problem is it, it doesn't record very well. All right, so I'm going to take the timing belt here and I'm just going to unroll it all the way. And what I need to do with this. Don't get it tangled. You no, know, it's going to tangle here because it's all twisty. What we're going to do is um, just get it unrolled. Now I'm going to divide it into three equal parts. So I'm going to do here, and then a loop coming back, and a loop coming back this way. But don't and then you I'll gotta grab measure. the ends and the loops. Well, it really doesn't matter. The measurement doesn't matter. What matters is that the three parts are all the same uh -huh. length. I'll shut that off. Okay, what I've done is I divided the whole roll of timing belt into three equal parts. What I've done is folded it over on itself so that I have three strands here. Just pull out here to the end. These don't actually have to be perfect. Um, they just have to be pretty close to the same. And there's actually enough extra so you can trim it off. So I'm just going to clip that loop and then come back to the other end here. And again, clip the loop and it gives me three equal pieces of timing belt. And in the way this goes on here, so we can get where we can see. Uh, maybe if we show that side here, see if we can put it on this side. Um, it's kind of hard to see where it goes through, but take one of the pieces of timing belt and just loop it through the y-axis. I'm going to start with the y-axis motor just because that's where it happens to be sitting here. Don't get this out yet. Okay. Um, so this goes up here, and then. Let's see, this is where it's going to fasten. Okay, so on the fitting here, what it's going to do, is that in the frame? What? Okay. Well, the, the gantry is in the way here. Well, not the gantry, the... the Go ahead. You know, let's pull this out of the way like this. All right, so this comes here. Let's see, it's going to wrap around these two posts here, and that's what's going to hold it in place. And then the teeth teeth here kind of fit together to hold it so that's just gonna go like so just like I think your hands are in the way they probably are just like that and that just slides in it's it's pretty easy to slide it in um, so it slides in like that loops around here and then the teeth hold it together and then it's running around the pinion on the y-axis motor in this case or Z axis or the X axis, whichever. It's going to go on all three. 
So make sure that it's on the teeth of the pinion, and then on the other side of the of the belt tensioner, it goes through this slot, and then up at the top. Let's see if we can turn the camera so we can see the top. Mm. Good, good, right there. Okay. So this is just going to push through here. Okay. It's a whole lot easier if this is standing up. I've got it laying down on its side so that we can get it in the camera frame, but really if it's standing up, you're working it at eye level, it's a lot easier to do. I'm finding that video really slows everything down. All right, you got it? Mm -hmm. Okay, it has to go underneath the mm -hmm. arm there. Mm -hmm. Make sure it doesn't fall off of the, yeah, pull it tight. Okay, now when you tension this, everything's moving around again. Wait, now they can't see it. Oh, okay, so when you tension this, it's important that it's tight, but be aware of not making it too tight. We found with the first machine, we made these really super tight, and when we did that, uh, we were putting so much stress on the motors that the motor actually kind of seized up and would skip steps. So, we just make a loop in the end and go ahead and push the teeth together. And then really, you just want it just about as tight as you can make it with your fingers. You don't really need, you don't need pliers or anything. Um, I, know, I hope I'm in the frame here. Here I am. Push that through here. Okay, and that's there. Now that's, this is just a little bit too loose. So I want to tighten these up. I'm not going to use this. Why? I'm just not, not now. Okay, okay that's later. Okay. All right, I'll explain all that when we get to it, okay? All right. All right, so this has got to be just a little bit tighter. So I'm going to just pull it off. I'm kind of holding it together here to make sure that the teeth are engaged. And I'm just going to pull it apart and I'm going to just pull one tooth tighter. So the teeth are engaged still. Still a loop. And then just, just as tight as I can stretch it with my hands, but I'm not going to use any tools. So I'm going to push that on there. Okay. And now. Okay. So it, it feels loose and then eventually we'll put some belt tensioners on here. They provide some springs that'll tighten that up. So anyway, we'll get all get all three of those on and we'll come back to the next step. Okay, so the teeth kind of lock together here. And it slides into this notch right here and goes around here, and that's what keeps that locked in place. So once you've got those in place, you really don't need to have, you notice I've got a long tail here, really don't need to have that. And that'll tend to get fouled down in the motor if you leave it there, although really it's pretty far, far away. But what I'm going to do is just clip the end of that timing belt off. <laughs> if I can get in there with the scissors. Um, I'm just going to clip the end of that off. I'm going to leave myself about maybe three quarters of an inch or an inch of slack there, but that's all I really need. So I've tightened this up. What I did to tighten this up was I just clamped, I just clamped it together with my hemostat after I got it more or less where I wanted it, and then I kept moving it one tooth at a time. Um, I just shifted the top and the bottom one tooth at a time until I got to where I felt like it was adequately tight. I want it fairly loose. Uh, you don't want it tight like a guitar string. It doesn't really stretch that much. You're just kind of taking up, taking up the slack. You don't want too much slack in there. The belt will pull out of this channel, so you want to be sure that it, it is tight enough that it's going to want to stay there, although you can pull it out if you pull on it pretty tight. Uh, but just not trying to make it a guitar string. Up here at the top, <laughs> you can see where, as people have commented, the, the belt kind of hits those, those uh, screws that secure the, the switches. But it's not actually contacting, it's really close, but it's not actually touching. Uh, and again, I think I said in the other video, and, and some commenters have said, hey, replace those with button head screws. It's not a bad idea at all. If you get some button heads, go ahead and put those in. But they didn't come with the machine. Those are uh, M2.5 by 12 millimeters. So if you got some M2.5 by 12 millimeter button head screws, that would probably be ideal for right there. 
Okay, the next step is to install the belt tensioners, which are these little springs that look like they came off of a clothespin. And from experience with the other machine, you know, we decided it was best to put them underneath, on the underneath side of the carriage. These never go down far enough that you're actually going to hit anywhere, so um, they just go like so. They clip on. Ah, it flips on like this so that they're kind of facing outward and if you're not trying to do this so that you can see it on camera it's a lot easier again with the machine laying on its side you can kind of get it well so what did I manage to do I managed to pull the belt right off of the oy right off of the yeah oy vey is right okay let's try that again oy. yeah I'll try this again I had to reattach the timing belt at the bottom and then I put the clip down and I lost it yeah, like that. That just puts a little bit of tension on the line. You want to make sure that it moves freely. If okay, one last quick thing here. As I was tensioning these up and putting it all together, I took a look at the homing switches here and I realized that the stop, stop that's here on the carriage, I put these in so that it was hitting on the... These are little micro switches and they have little... Uh, how can we get that in the shot here? See that little red part right there? That is the actual switch itself. And then it has this steel paddle that's attached to it. And that's kind of spring steel. And when I put these in, I put it in so that as the, as the carriage comes up, it's hitting on the side of the switch that's right close to that switch. And it really ought to be hitting on the paddle instead. It gives it kind of a little shock absorber effect. It also gives it a little more leverage so that the motor doesn't have to strain very hard to actuate the stop switch until it's at the end. I don't know that it makes a difference, but uh, on the other machine, I do have it the other way. So what I'm going to do is take these switches off, all of them, and I'm going to switch them all around. I actually did that on this one already. So I can show you right here. You can see here that the, that the, actual, the actual actuator on the switch itself is, is at the lower side and... So as the stop nut comes up, it's kind of hard to see because I've already got the timing belt in, but as it comes up here, that stop screw, so you can see that, that stop screw is hitting that paddle. That gives it a lot more leverage to actuate that switch. It doesn't take anywhere near as much force from the stepper motors to lift that up. Uh, in, in use, this kind of comes up and it taps that switch and then it backs off just a little little bit. That's actually built into the programming, the Marlin software. So we'll talk about more about that when uh, we get to set up the software of this machine. All right, that's the end of this video on installing the homing switches. Uh, I hope it was useful. If you like this video, click like and uh, you know subscribe and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we're building a catalog here of videos and eventually we hope to have we do all kinds of interesting stuff here so hopefully we'll have more and more videos and I hope you'll like them. Bye!